Hi, and welcome to another episode of Timeless Tutorials Basic Series. In this episode, we'll go over putty voxels. And to get us started, we need to clear an area on our claim roughly about five voxels or deeper from the surface of the default ground level. And for this reason, we can be assured that the voxel shapes are clean and have retained their square shape. Putty voxels are essentially server-generated voxels, voxels that the game has created for its own use in the world, like the ground we actually walk on. Server-generated voxels contain no data in relation to their vertices. Also, if we copy these voxels and try to paste them, they essentially will not appear, and here I'll demonstrate. So. I have cleared out my, my section, kind of getting off of the surface, that way we can stay away from these curvatures here. And I'm far enough, far enough down that if I, I can take my selection and copy something down here, such as this area of land, if I do a control C and then do a control V to paste, you can see that nothing gets pasted. And let's try that again. Still nothing. But if we apply a material to these voxels, it makes them tangible or essentially gives us the ability to copy them and then paste them back into the world. So let me take my paint tool and let's paint a voxel down here. By applying a material to them, it assigns just the material data but it still does not assign the values for the vertices. So we have our thing selected. Let's copy and control V to paste. And you can see I can bring that up into the world now so I can actually see it. Now that we've copied this voxel, we can now paste it into the world. And once this has been done, the voxel changes to the shape of the voxel it has been pasted into or the voxel that it has replaced. At this point it gains the vertices values of the voxel and is no longer a putty voxel. Thus cannot be copied and then used again in the same way. Putty voxels it can be very useful. Uh, many times you will make something such as a rounded object using your smooth tool or make some other type of a shape that you wish to work next to but not mess it up uh, especially when you place another voxel next to it. Let's take this putty voxel and paste it next to this circular shape and see what happens. So control V and let's paste it right next to it a few times and you can kind of see that just by pasting this putty voxel around this object it actually molds around it and it actually retains that curvature shape now if if I use my add tool, right the opposite happens. As I stated in the last episode, episode 9, um, items pasted in the world or created using the provided tools have dominance. Thus, what you place into the world, the voxels around it have to conform to that shape. Putty voxels do right the opposite. They putty voxels conform to the shape that they're being pasted into. All right, so let's use our add tool and pretty much do the same thing as what I just did down here with the putty voxels. And I'll just go right along the edge here <clears throat> and pretty much doing the exact same. And you can see all those voxels all the voxels around it that of the ones that we pasted in there or use the add tool to 
put into the world, all those voxels around it actually conformed to those voxels instead of like the putty, which conformed to the shape of the voxel that was already existing. <clears throat> now, this is one use of putty voxels, being able to actually move around like curved objects and, and do it without distorting what you have already created. <laughs> Now, I still have that putty voxel on the clipboard, and I've already set up some other stuff that we can kind of play with with putty voxels, and I'll show you other things that you can actually do with putty voxels, such as paste it into areas like this. Say that we've created a shape, and we want to fill that shape in without messing it all up. You can see that this square shape of this putty voxel is actually conforming to that shape that we're actually pasting it into. So it's taken the form of that air space that is inside this little panel that I've created. And there we go, we've filled it up and it's retained that really weird looking shape that I had there. And the same thing will apply with these little etching um, that I've done to this part of the wall. And as you can see, if I select this area here, it's actually really tiny. It's not the size of a normal voxel. It's actually really small. So if I take my, my putty voxel and move it up and then in to the airspace, I can fill that airspace and it conforms to that shape like so. Now if I tried to do that same thing with the add tool such as down here which is the same thing as what's here above it if I take my add tool and then try to use my add tool to fill that little gap you can see it does not do the same thing. It actually that gapping has to conform to the add tools um, voxel placement because of the dominance. Um, I hope this tutorial has helped you and, and, and put another very valuable tool in your tool bag. Uh, definitely stay tuned for our next tutorial. Episode 11, Templates. <laughs>